A little bit ago, Amanda and I were invited onto Trending with Timory on Relevant Radio to talk about groceries. I'd like to share that episode with you today. So, what's trending? Bridging your Catholic faith with your everyday life. You're listening to Trending with Timory on Relevant Radio. Have you ever thought of your money and how you navigate it from debt, what you take on, what you don't take on, just what you buy at the grocery store from a Catholic perspective. Is there a Catholic approach to finances? There actually is. If you look at much of sacred scripture, especially the gospel of Matthew, but not exclusively, all of scripture is peppered in with examples of money, how to use it, analogies with regard to the kingdom of God and money and understanding our salvation, the value of the soul. And so to give a distinctly Catholic take on finances, joining me today are financial coaches, Jonathan and Amanda Texera from WalletWin.com. We're going to discuss a Catholic approach to debt. So stay with us as we'll dive into that, along with how do you save money on groceries with the rise in the cost of groceries and food, just eggs even. Uh, So if you'd like to hear a little bit about this, whether you're growing your family or maybe your home is scaling down the number of people that you're in your home? What's appropriate to spend and navigate with the changing economy? If you'd like to join the conversation, our toll-free line is 888-914-9149, and it's sponsored by Catholic Order of Foresters Life Insurance. Jonathan Amanda Texera from WalletWin, thank you for joining me today. Let's dive into groceries. This seems to be a hot topic right now. I hear a lot of people complaining about everything from buying eggs to rationing meat. And it's a unique time we live in with uh, never really being able to catch up right now when it comes to the rising cost of groceries. And that question alone of how much do you spend on groceries to begin with, I think can be a confusing and sensitive spot for many. So I'd love to get your way in on this topic. Yeah, this has certainly been something that has affected all American households over the last several years. The statistics have, you know, continued to gone up as time's gone on, but it's shown that groceries are 25 to 35 percent higher than they were four years ago. So the same dollar that we were spending four years ago on the same grocery cart has exponentially multiplied and it's outpaced every other form of inflation in this inflationary times that we've been in over the last several years. And that's really Mm -hmm. eaten up most families reserve money. And so where we used to recommend, you know, several years ago, people could kind of go off a general rule of thumb of about $100 per month per person in the family. Uh, Now we're recommending more like $125 to $150 per month per person in the family just because of the inflation alone. And even that, take some creativity. You know, it takes meal planning and shopping in season and and a little bit of intentionality, but it can be done in, in those numbers. And I just, I want people to take a deep breath and feel a little bit of relief there because some people aren't spending enough on groceries, but then others, I guess they might feel a little panicked if they do the math on those numbers, (laughs) Uh, but just feel hope that it can be done. You can figure out a way to rein this category in of your household spending. It just takes a few tricks. Okay. So I want to dive into that because even when you're saying, okay, you know, adjusting with inflation for about $150 per month per person when it comes to groceries and you're You also have the influences from geographically where you live. Mm -hmm. Even if you're in my household, dietary restrictions, I have severe food allergies. And sometimes eating those gluten-free, dairy-free things are a lot more expensive. And so I have to keep it simple Mm -hmm. with meat and vegetables. But then you need to consume more of it if you're not having all the carburous content. So there's so much, I think, to this. But I like that that starting point where it used to be on average 100 per month per person. Now it's more so bumping up toward that 150 level. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about Costco a little later on because I'd be curious to hear your thoughts (laughs) on buying in bulk. But I find when I shop at Costco, often I'm spending more. So uh, we'll come to that in a bit. But where do you begin with your how-to on saving money when it comes to groceries? Saving money when it comes to your groceries is like saving money in other areas of your life or really doing anything you want in your life uh, well. So you need to sit down and have a plan. Uh, So you need to, you know, sit down and one, maybe you have your general idea of how much you want to spend this month. 
uh, based on some of those numbers we mentioned earlier. And now go in and pick out what you'd like to eat. Make the plan. You know, if you have a, a recipe that's calling for half a head of cabbage on Tuesday night, well, maybe, you know, make some coleslaw on Thursday and use the rest of that up so there's none wasted. If you are wise when you are planning your meals, you can take advantage of, you know, what's on sale, what's in season, all of that to help bring the price down and make sure that your recipes and your meals are working together so that you're using ingredients up and not wasting food. We waste so much food, especially here in America, uh, just because we don't get to it in time. It, you know, kind of rots a bit and well, there it is. That could have fed someone that could have fed our family, but what a, what a crime it is uh, to throw away food that was perfectly good to allow it to literally spoil on the shelf or in the fridge because we didn't care enough to use that gift that was given us. Mm. Yeah. And isn't it so challenging? I remember I've always been like, like I hate wasting food. And when it was just my <laughs> husband and I, I was really great. When it was my husband and I and one child, we were really good. And now with our second, I'm just a little less aware of what's going on in the fridge. And it just like kills me inside <laughs> that there are things that are sliding to the back parts of the fridge. And again, this is already like a sensitive topic for me. Like I mm -hmm. hate wasting food because it seems so silly. We have something, eat it. And so it sounds like it's a good reminder to engage in leftovers and as you said, planning meals that complement each other with using all of the ingredients. Or I love to plan in my meal plan. I really do plan for leftovers, like really eating yes. those leftovers mm -hmm. or having some empty days where I empty meals where I didn't really make a plan because I know things will kind of accumulate in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, we only plan in our meal plan to cook maybe three or four nights a week. And then we know that the leftovers are going to yes. take you know, take the pressure off cooking other nights. And so not only is it saving you time, but then it's preventing you from having to throw away food and waste money um, with literal food down the drain. Now, another strategy that I encourage people to use is uh, it's not available everywhere, but the store Aldi, if you have Aldi in your area, it's a fantastic resource. Even prices at Aldi have gone up though, you know, so don't think that they, they don't have any inflation impacting them, but they're a really solid grocery store to kind of supplement um, and and purchase some some good quality ingredients for less. Uh, but then another advantage that people could use um, is online grocery shopping. And I'm not talking about Instacart. Um, maybe that could help in some situations, but they do tend to add a lot of fees onto Instacart. But a lot of stores have adapted since the pandemic happened to be able to order online and do a pickup or possibly a delivery. But the beauty of this is that you get to control the cost of the cart. Because sometimes when we go into the grocery store and we just start piling things in, we're not always doing the math on what this grocery cart is going to add up to. But if we know that we only have $100 left in the grocery budget and we've got eight days left in the month, sometimes the best strategy is just to fill up your cart on you know, Walmart grocery so that you can control exactly how much that checkout is going to be instead of risk going into the grocery store and now blowing the entire budget up. <laughs> yeah, now you can do this in, in store, of course, by keeping track of things or even at the checkout. But yeah, you're probably less likely, you know, once everything's gone down the conveyor belt and all that to go, oh, you know, let's put one of those milks back. Uh, it's really easy to do that when all it takes is a click. Also, another benefit of going online and doing your shopping is there's a lot less impulse buys because there are no end caps yes. on uh, <laughs> online. There are no clearance racks. Uh, you can't walk past those things that are designed to suck the money out of your wallet. So while it might <laughs> seem a little weird, say, hey, just go online and do your shopping. It eliminates a lot of those things, right? There's thankfully... Uh, no pop-up at the end at checkout asking me if I want a candy bar. <laughs> at least for now, depending on where you go, I find everywhere online is adding <laughs> the pop-ups. Or before you check out, mm -hmm. here are some of our great deals. Or have you considered that? <laughs> some places aren't. But it's funny you mentioned that because I, about six months ago, had a couple friends who started... Uh, 
to feel a little uncomfortable. They never really had a situation where they were uncomfortable with finances. We're very blessed. And suddenly I'm starting to hear them talk about the cost of groceries. This is about a year ago. And mm -hmm. I remember one of my friends said, yeah, I just... I do all my grocery shopping via Instacart, um, and it's so much easier for me. And I said, do you spend more, though? And she says, no, I actually spend less because I make my plan, and I go to Instacart, and I only put exactly what I need in. Instead of saying, oh, look, peaches, those look really nice. I actually have to follow a meal plan or just stock up on essentials and she uses instacart but as you mentioned most even local small grocery stores mm -hmm. now have online ordering i just haven't gotten into the swing of this i do a lot of other online but like groceries other than ordering meat in bulk i think this is something i know i could definitely work on but i love going to the grocery store as well it's like such a relaxing thing to do <laughs> mm -hmm. yes i do love a good grocery trip uh, another benefit of the online, though, is depending on, you know, if you're using any sort of meal planning service or recipe software, a lot of them now, you can just one click and it'll forward all your ingredients, you know, after you say, oh, yeah, well, I've already got butter, etc. It can push all of those ingredients mm -hmm. directly into the cart for you on your preferred, uh, you know, grocery store. So it saves even more time as you, again, continue to reap the manifold benefits of planning your meals. These are great. And some of the things that are really helpful for me, and I know you guys have alluded to it, but really just number one, making that meal plan and then converting mm -hmm. that meal plan to my shopping list and then scaling back the shopping list after the fact, kind of just knowing there's certain things that maybe are add-ons that are treats or additions to the meals that aren't necessarily necessary. And it's a good reminder for me I love to try and le eat liturgically. In other words, like mm -hmm. save the special foods for the special days, whether it's mm -hmm. Sundays, having the desserts on those days or being a little more lenient or specific feast days that we enjoy. It's like Our Lady of Fatima. That was a day we celebrated a little bit more yesterday. So we enjoy different mm -hmm. things. Uh, or maybe, you know, you save the bacon to go with the eggs for the weekend. Those are types of things that I've tried to do to stretch some of our own food, but that has to reflect in the shopping list where I'm not just throwing mm -hmm. the bacon or whatever it is into every single breakfast meal. Yes. And one last strategy that I want to suggest, we do this um, in our Catholic Money Academy membership twice a year, actually. We encourage people to do what we call a pantry freezer meal challenge. And essentially, this is where you take inventory in your fridge, you take inventory of the freezer, and then you go take inventory in your pantry. And outside of buying maybe eggs, milk, and bread, you don't buy anything else. You design your meals for the next bit of time just around what you have on hand. And without this, I found that, you know, things are left to get freezer burned or things will expire on the shelf. Uh, that I just haven't been able to to work into a meal. And it does force you two times a year to really clean out that fridge, that freezer, that pantry. And it's a load off the grocery budget for those two months. So I found that we'll save at least half, if not more, those months that we actually do those, which is really nice because then there's two months that were a little smaller during the year, but then it allows for, you know, the November Thanksgiving and the, the December Christmas food spending where it tends to be a lot higher and it kind of offsets mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. So I do encourage people to do a pantry freezer meal challenge at least twice a year. So that looks like such as really using and planning your meal around what you have already in the pantry and freezer and matching it up for a full month. Is that what I'm hearing? No, not a full month, but as long as you can go. Yes. Yeah, I mean, meals get a little funky and creative <laughs> in there. You know, you might be making like a, a wrap out of things that you've never put onto a wrap before, but <laughs> you're using things up creatively. Maybe you're, you know, it, you're making a frittata and it's just kind of whatever frozen veggie you happen to have, you sauteed up and threw into this frittata. Uh, it's just trying to be creative and just use what's on hand. Yeah, yeah, your your first stop when making your meal plan is the pantry and the freezer instead of, you know, the cookbook or the website or your favorite thing to eat. And that helps just use up that stuff, that can of soup that you're not really sure how it got there. Well, now you get to use it. <laughs> it's so funny you say that cuz I was feeling a bit of a in a bit of a 
rut when it came to food and my husband was grocery shopping for me on his way home and he said okay send me the list and my sister was over I said okay I need a list for food here's what I've got in the freezer but I'm not sure what else and it's funny because she's coming up with all these delicious sounding meals that just sound wonderful I'm saying focus I only have certain things in the freezer and it was so funny because she's very young she just doesn't get the concept of like matching what you have in the freezer to what you're buying but it was really making me laugh because I was trying so hard to stay focused and not distracted by all the exciting things that she was proposing but it's kind of the same thing as everything from Instagram to Pinterest all these foods Mm -hmm. sound great but adapting them into a meal plan can be kind of hard sometimes. Yeah, that's where I have found, you know, there are some meal planning services out there. We've used, what is it? Eat Meals before. That That was back in the day we used that. But again, that's really helpful, especially if you're, you know, starting out, maybe you haven't cooked a whole lot. Uh, It gives you the recipes. It gives you exactly what to buy. And they're designed to work with each other to use up ingredients. Uh, There's another one. um, It used to be called Whisk. Now it's Samsung bought it. So Samsung Food. That's just a place where you can save recipes from the internet. You can put your own in uh, and then you just say, I'm making this and this and this. And then it puts all the ingredients together. It makes your shopping list. So that's a, a, easy, help, help, a way to help you smooth out some of those uh, mm-hmm. pains of planning. Mm-hmm. Another use of technology. I mean, you could even go to Google and just say, I have a roast. I have carrots. I have, you know, you could kind of say that those kind of go together, but you might be able to tell it some random things you have, and it might come up with something genius for you to do with it. Because sometimes we're just so stuck in what we know, but Mm -hmm. there might be a recipe out there that we could use. Another thing that I found interesting is people going on to chat GBT. I was just about to say that. Yeah, you can go ahead and say, look, these are my dietary restrictions. Here's kind of how we like to eat. I would like a meal plan for the next week. Um, I only want three breakfasts that I can cook and kind of use leftovers on other days. You can tell it very specific things. And then next thing you know, it's designed you this fantastic meal plan. And you didn't have to think at all, which is real beautiful. I love that. My husband did a chat GPT meal plan a few weeks ago, and it was great for him. He didn't use it per se exactly, but it gave him ideas Mm -hmm. for what we could throw onto the shopping list. Okay, here's my question. And if you're just joining us, that's a Jonathan and Amanda Texera. They're financial coaches. You can find them. They're great programs at WalletWin.com. So here's my Costco predicament. Costco, <laughs> Costco, you have the ability to buy like real legitimate things that I need and use. Like I go and I buy Maybe it's a nut butter. Maybe it's a Mm -hmm. broccoli in bulk. Like I legitimately use it up, but I always find I spend more when I go to Costco, even though I'm being really rigid with what I'm purchasing there. And if you just look at Costco averages, you're really going to spend about $300. If you look at the Mm -hmm. cost of one item being, let's say, 20 or so dollars, it's very easy for you to come out. What is your philosophy and thought on Costco? Ooh, I was I was waiting for you to get to this. Uh, so yeah, Costco is very interesting. They have some of the lowest per you know like unit cost prices on the highest quality goods. Often, yes. Yeah, so I I also had just listened to a great three hour podcast episode of, all about Costco. Uh, so I've got a lot of stuff in my head right now. Um, but because there's it's such quantities that you are buying, you end up you do end up spending more at the point of purchase. So, and because of this, the uh, Costco, the average Costco uh, customer, their income is about 40 to 50% higher on average than the typical Walmart customer because in order to take advantage of the deals, you need to be able to pay for all of that Mm -hmm. bulk at once. Uh, Gotta have money to save money. That's right. So when we uh, are in times, you know, maybe some of these challenge months or things where we want to shift a little extra money somewhere else in the budget, we will cut out Costco. Avoid. So in mm-hmm. some ways yep. we are maybe going to spend a little bit more, you know, per ounce of cheese or whatever it is. And it's but, not going to be as good of cheese. Yes. <laughs> Sadly. But we know by not buying that much cheese at once or not going to get that pretty low cost per ounce cheese, but then also throwing this and that and the other thing in the cart as well, that we are going to save money overall. Mm -hmm. So uh, you need to be really disciplined when it comes to going to Costco, especially when you're trying to 
bring down your food cost. It can help when you are taking advantage of that great bulk pricing, but it can bite you. And, and this may sound funny, but I'll actually hide the Costco bulk stuff in a different closet sometimes <laughs> so that, you know, maybe it's chips and I'm not going to eat them, but it's an easy thing to take to a party. And I just have uh -huh. it already because I mean, a giant bag of chips, it's so much less at Costco than going to the normal mm -hmm. grocery store. Or it yes. might be that I bought some olives or I hate buying snacks. Navigating that with kids is really hard, but it's snacks I bought for the uh -huh. kids and I'm going to hide half of them because it's a treat. Yes. Uh, it can be mm -hmm. really challenging for me with Costco, but I like what you said, Jonathan, because you mentioned if it's a month that's a little tighter, you just have to skip the Costco trip altogether. Mm -hmm. Or you go just once and you know that that can kind yes. of be the discipline and the the happy medium is yeah, if you're gonna our... go, you go with a list and that's yeah. that's your one time instead of using it like a zoo membership and you're constantly <laughs> there and loving the samples, but then your budget is blown to smithereens. <laughs> Yeah, that's where we've actually landed. It's kind of a once per month thing, only essentials, no excess. And then it <laughs> is helping with a food budget. And I have found some of the fresh vegetables. It's actually really easy to just freeze the whole bags of them as well. Not mm. just the frozen, but it's been part of my more recent trick. OK, I love these tips. If you're trying to navigate food, budgeting, the cost of living going up, especially groceries, those were your tips, some great ones. So if you missed that part of the episode, be sure to subscribe to the podcast, relevantradio.com or on the app and wherever you listen to podcasts. Joining me now are Jonathan and Amanda Texera from Wallet Win.